Hi there, Tim here. I'm going to go through a little tutorial on Light and Blue, the uh, small blue song in the Alfred book number three. What I want to talk about is a few things, some timing, I want to talk about adding a few extras in, getting a bit of a feel for it. So first thing is the timing. Often I hear it played very straight. As it's written in the book, it sounds like this. Other way people play it is they see the long short pairs thing that they so talk about with the quavers. They'll play it with slightly too long on the first quaver, so you end up with still wrong. What we want to do is take each beat divided into three, and that will give us what they call a triplet feel. So instead of counting one and two and, we're going to count one and a two and a three and a, and so on. The long part is the one and, and we play the short part on the a. Uh. So you get one and a two and a three and a four and a. And that gives us a nice blues feel. Right. <clears throat> what we're going to look at also is the 8VA part where it goes up and you get In the book, it's written with just a second played as a semitone, so you end up with jars a bit, doesn't it? What we want to do is adjust that so that we're going to have uh, a leading note. Some people call it a grace note, it gets called a poggiatura, it gets all, called all sorts of things. All we're going to do is lead into that E from the D sharp. I'll just demonstrate how this is going to work. In the book, it's written like this. Not that nice. What we want to do is flick this note on the way through to landing on this one. Often when uh, the young ones start doing this, they will... But you have to land on this note and hold it. This one still flicks up, like that. So slow motion, it looks... just leads nicely into this one and that gives us a nice little flourish on it. Okay so what I'm going to do also is add in some extras into the second half which is the repeat. So you go through the whole of the first two pages, play it as it's written with our one end or two end of timing and then when we come through and do the repeat we're going to change things up a little bit. So we're going to add notes on all of those one and a two and us. So the right hand will now go. Makes it a bit more bluesy. We'll do the same thing with the next phrase. So that'll give us a bit of excitement in there. We'll also change the rhythm of the next part where we go to those three primary chords. So we'll get an extra one put in on the V7. A little bit more rhythm in that part. Then on the page two, so it's almost like the fourth page of the song by the time you're doing the repeat, um, we will change the left hand a little bit. That's now going to go... you go. So those are the three things we're going to do to it. Let's have a look at how the whole song pans out.
there you have it. Sounds a little bit more bluesy. Um, you'll also notice on some of the high notes, I was pushing them a little bit as you head up to the high note. Give it a little bit of extra push. Um, careful how you balance the hands. You don't want the left hand to be too dominant. You want the right hand melody to sing out. There you go. Go for it. Go play. <laughs>